following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Gnostic Mysteries, the children of God. The children of God, the recordings with uh, John chapter 1st, verse 13, are those that are born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. Of course, when we address the blood, we have to remember that there are many groups, religious groups in the world, that they believe that because they uh, belong to certain sects or groups, religious, and because they are following the blood lineage of certain individuals, they are already in that category of children of God. Not of the will of the flesh, that is obvious, meaning that Children of God are not those like us that are uh, children of fornication. The will of the flesh is the orgasm, the spasm, animal spasm, that we experience in the flesh. Not of the will of man means that not because somebody declares that you are a child of God or children of God because they, by their own whim, uh, interpret the scriptures. They think that because they give you the title of an apostle or a prophet, just going by the will of God, you know, the different religions have that where you uh, enter and uh, reach a certain level, certain rank, and re you receive a new name. And because you receive that new name by the will of somebody else, a bishop maybe, or somebody that is uh, a very high hierarchy, then you are already a big initiate. No. The verse of the chapter states very clearly, very clearly, that it's only by the will of God that we become children of God. And this is precisely the top, uh, the lecture that follows, of course, the previous lecture that we gave, named the Son of God, in which we were explaining about the nature of Christ. But here, we are descending into the human level and to explain what is to be a child of God from that point of view. Of course, we all know that 
the Gospel of John states that the one that gave that privilege of you become children of God is Christ. In other words, Christ is that entity that gives you that privilege of becoming a child of God. But we have to explain right now in which way are we uh, children of God. And for that, we have to study the tree of life. Remember that in the Bible, there is a reference about the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that's why uh, we study the tree of life. That all, all of us know that is not an actual tree, like the tree that we find there in the garden or in the fields, but a symbol of all of that that exists. Here we find this beautiful image of the tree of life, in which we find 11 spheres. Or as we said in Kabbalah, Sephiroth. Ten spheres are related with the tree of life. And the one in the middle that is called Da'at, which is isolated there in the tree, is what we call the tree of knowledge. Because the tree of knowledge... Oh, knowledge in Hebrew is dad. So we will say that in this uh, graphic we have the symbol of the two trees. Because the two trees interrelate to each other in order to understand what the Bible explains about the children of God. In the left of this uh, graphic we have different uh, statements that we are going to explain in order for us to see how is it that the children of God emerge from this marvelous tree of knowledge and tree of life. The first line states, the one city above is a Elohim. So, when you look at the graphic, above all these spheres, you find, of course, the abstract, absolute space within which we find that city, which is not a deity. Find the difference between deity and city. Deity is something that is manifested, while city is unmanifested. And that's why it is represented by the abstract, absolute space. The name that we gave in Gnosticism to that deity or city is A Elohim which means a without. That it is a city from which Elohim emerges, but it is not Elohim. It's something else that even the gods, the Elohim, want to know. And that is why when we said a Elohim, we point at that statement of Moses, or the first commandment that states, you shall not make any image of a Elohim. Because it is impossible to symbolize the abstract, absolute space. We can symbolize what is manifested, but the space cannot be symbolized by nothing. But we name it Elohim. That city 
is from where the 10 sephiroth emerge. And all of these 10 sephiroth together is what we call Elohim, which is a word that we explain in many lectures that means gods and goddesses or different deities or cities. So Elohim also has other explanations that we are going to give today because in Kabbalah, the word Elohim that is translated in many Bibles of God erroneously has many explanations. The simple one is gods and goddesses. Now, the third line states, Christ, the light between and within these two, is Barashith Bar A Elohim. This means that Christ is not a person, is not an individual, but light. That light in Kabbalah, receives the name of Ein Sof Or. And that light is abstract light within the abstract absolute space that for us look like dark. Abides not in the three-dimensional world, but in the seventh or zero dimension. So in it, we find the light that we call or in Hebrew. A-U-R, or. That light, of course, abides within the space, but also becomes uh, endowed within endowed within every single element or matter or thing that exists in the universe. And uh, that's why we said that Christ, the light, between and within these two, these two is, or are, I mean, Elohim and Elohim, the unmanifested and the manifested. So Christ is that light in between the two. This is how we have to understand it. And the word Barashith Bar Elohim is the first words that we find in the book of Genesis that has many explanations. Here we are saying Barashith Bar Elohim. In the beginning, the son of Elohim. This is how it's translated. In the beginning, the son of Elohim became within the Elohim. The fourth line says, These two beget the Ruach Elohim. And this is precisely the main point here. Since this Ruach Elohim is within each one of us. is what we call our own monad, our own spirit, our own angel, our own God, our own particular spirit. That particular spirit in Kabbalah receives the name of El. Aleph Lamed, El. But it's also part of Elohim, the manifested one. And on the, of the unmanifested. That's why we call it the Ruach. Means the spirit. The Ruach Elohim. It's what the Bible states that in the beginning, the Ruach Elohim was floating above the face of the waters. In this very moment, is coming into my mind that beautiful graphic of the Hindu pantheon. 
in which we see Vishnu on the waters of uh, the lower waters of the earth and from uh, his navel comes a lotus flower and on top of that lotus flower we find Brahma or Brahma as we say it also and that Brahma is precisely that Ruach Elohim that according to the Bible was floating above the waters but it is very singular that the Hindus also represent that Brahma floating on the top of that lotus flower that is connected to the navel of uh, Vishnu, which is, in this case, represents Bar Elohim, or Christ, the light. It is very important because in Hinduism, we call Brahma, we call it the creator. But also, we have our own particular individual Brahma within, which is the creator. You see, creator. In Kabbalah, when you talk about creation, you name the world Bria, which in English is written with B, R, I, A. Bria. Creation. But uh, uh, the main point here is that this world creation is in the name or in the word Brahma. With the difference that in the end is the letter M and the letter A. Brahma. That Ma at the end is pointed at the matter. The matter that the Ruach, the spirit, is going to mold according to the will of Elohim and a Elohim. This is what we have to understand. Because our own particular spirit emerge from the absolute and become connected to Elohim. So this is how you have to understand that the Ruach Elohim, which is our own particular spirit, is the child of the two. Is that Elohim within? So that Ruach Elohim, that is Brahma, works according to the rules, to the laws of Elohim and a Elohim. And works with Ma, the matter. Now, I remind you that in Kabbalah, the word Ma is Mem and the letter He. This is how you write Ma in Hebrew. The letter Mem, the symbol of water. And the letter He symbolizes the very bottom of the tree of life, which is called Malkut. That's why you see in the graphic the planet Earth, which symbolizes Malkut, which is also called the world of Asia. Asia, which in Hebrew means matter and action. This is very important to understand because in order for the matter and action comes of the world of Asia, which is Malkut, it needs the intervention of the Ruach Elohim, which is Brahma, which is our own particular individual El spirit. Pay attention to that because it's important in order to understand how a child of God or the children of God becomes to existence. Now, we're talking about Brahma. 
which in Hinduism is the creator. But also in Kabbalah, the same letters are attributed to the Ruach Elohim, which the Sohar explains very clearly that Chesed, who also is called Gedula, is that Sephira that relates to Abraham. And if you inquire, Abraham has the same letters of Brahma, just backwards. In the beginning, this Abraham, which is El, the spirit, is Abram. Abram. This is how the Sohar states and also the Bible. This Abram, which is Chesed, is only missing one letter. And there's the letter He of the name Abraham. The letter He. When we add the letter He to Abram, and then we find Abraham. But this word Abraham also has the letters related to the world of Bria. And also the two letters related to matter, which is Ma. Abraham, Abra is Bria. And Ham, He and Mem, is Ma backwards. So in other words, we see here very clear that this Abraham and this Brahma in Hinduism is the same entity inside of us. And that's why in the Bible you find that the children of Abraham are the children of God. But Abraham is Brahma, the creator. In the previous lecture, we explained that uh, the Bible says in the second chapter, these are the generations of the heaven and the earth in the day that they were created. This is the translation. But in Hebrew it says, these are the generations of the earth by Abraham. Because it says, Behi Baram, or by Brahma. So behold here, the similitude, the comparison of the two words, that is not a coincidence. It's just pointing to our own particular individual God within the Ruach Elohim that was floating above the waters in that lotus flower, according to Hinduism. And of course, in the Bible, it doesn't say that the Ruach Elohim was floating in the lotus flower, but it was. Because that lotus flower in Kabbalah is called Shoshana, which is a rose or a lily, which symbolizes all the archetypes that are named in the Bible, Israel. Let us go into the next graphic in order to explain, to continue this explanation. The Sohar states, this word Shoshana which means rose or lily. What does it mean and symbolize? It symbolizes the congregation of Israel. We are arriving at this moment at this name Israel that is very common in this day and age. But remember, there is a group of people named Israel in the Middle East that are from the lineage of blood and by the will of the flesh, 
but we are talking here about the will of God, Kabbalah. So they're not mixed. The will of the flesh or the will of the blood because it is not related with that. So the Sohar states, the expression congregation of Israel in the first instance refers to the Logoi. This is a Greek word which means words or logos, plural. Firstborn children of light or as they are termed in the book of Job, the morning stars, the cosmo creators, who along with the children of Elohim, the children of God, send their son of praise at the creation of the world. In an extended sense, it includes the true children of light who have attained the realization of the divine life. That is precisely what we have to understand by the children of Israel. In uh, Egyptian terminology, Is is Isis. Ra is the Logos that we name is Christ. That is within Elohim and within Elohim. And El, El is our own particular individual God, the Ruach Elohim, that we are naming here. When the Bible states that within Abraham were already the children of Israel before becoming into existence, into the world of matter, is addressing the archetypes. The archetypes that were within Abraham. Now, the great patriarch, Abraham, existed. He came into this planet in order to represent that particular archetype of Sephira that is called Chesed, which means mercy. And as mercy is how it is written in the Old Testament, the book of Moses, all the activities of Abraham. But he began not as Abraham, but as Abraham. And this is something that is very interesting to understand and to comprehend in order to understand what this Shoshana that we call lotus flower is. Because if we understand that this Shoshana or these archetypes which are symbolized by the, the 22 letters of the alphabet, of the Hebrew alphabet, are 22 archetypes that were forming that flower upon which Brahma was floating in the beginning. So we've had to state that the Ruach Elohim that in the beginning was in the book of Genesis was floating also with these archetypes because these archetypes is what we call the spiritual soul, a place in the spiritual soul. And the spiritual soul and the spirit are one. This is what we call our monad, our own particular individual God within. Though this is how we have to work and to understand what is to become a child of God. So, <clears throat> in order to become a child of God, we had to work, of course, with Elohim and with Elohim. The solar absolute, which is light, which is the ains of or, descends through the ray of creation from the world of the light, which is that light behind Keter that we see in the second graphic, descends from Keter into Chokhmah, into Binah, and into Hesed, 
down to Malkut and Yesod is placed in our sexual organs and is forming that that we call sperma. That is a Greek word. Sperma is a Greek word that means sperm. And that is not only related to the male sex, but to the female sex. And it's precisely to this sperm that we can create. Because it's precisely related to Yesod, the sexual organs. This is what the book of Genesis called At, Aleph Tav, At. Because this word at, which is in the beginning in Genesis, Bereshit Bera Elohim, at Hashamayim, at Ha Haaretz, means in heaven and in earth. That is the beginning and the ending that the book of Revelation talks about. The beginning of the ending, which is Alpha and Omega in Greek, which is Christ, related to the whole 22 letters. Of the Hebrew alphabet, meaning that that light is hidden within every archetype, every letter of that Shoshana or Rossi cross, as we also call it. So that's why it is written that the aims of Or and the three manifested lights are Jod Hei Vav Hei, the Glorian. We talked about that in many lectures before. But understand that the first is Keter, an eternal becoming light. Because the light of Christ emerges from Keter into the tree of life. And goes down into our sexual organs. In order to, for us, to become children of God. That's why the book of John says that Christ is the life. Christ is the life that enlightens every man that comes into the world and has the power to create children of God, which are not born by the flesh or by the will of the man, but by the will of God. Right? We're talking here about the will of God. That will is Hesed in us. We explain in other lectures that that monad is precisely that part of Elohim that has the shape of a human being. When we investigate in, through meditation, what shape has that monad that we call Chesed, Ruach Elohim, or Brahma, inside of us, we discover that Chesed, the Ruach Elohim, Brahma, or Abraham within each one of us has the shape of a human being. And that's why many investigators that through meditation was to investigate the past of the earth, they uh, get confused because they see that in the past of the earth there were also human inhabitants in different epochs. But they have not the sense or the intuition in order to make a difference. That they are seeing the monad of all things that were created. Or they are seeing the physical body of those entities that were created. So therefore they get confused and think that the human being always existed. As we Kabbalistically understand that the Bible says made into the image of God. One thing is to find a man into the image of God, and another thing is to find the monad. The monad itself, of course, has the image of God, has a human shape. But doesn't mean that all the monads have, in all dimensions, the human shape. We talk about that in many lectures. 
the goal of every monad is to make the human being to the image of God. In other words, to make a child of God of each one of us. And that is the mission of Abraham. Or in the beginning, as we said, Abram. That's why it is written that Abram came from the city of Or. That city of Or is written Aleph Vav Resh Aur. The same when we send the ends of Or above. But it says, from the city of Or, of the Chaldeans. That's what the Bible says. But it's strange to find that in Hebrew, Chaldeans is not Chaldeans. But what we find is the word Shadim. Shadim. Shadim reminds, reminds us El Shaddai, the name of God in Yesod. And Shadim also means devils, uh, phantoms, has many appellations. So it says that Abram came from the city of Or of the Shadim. Chaldeans is what it says in the Bible, but I don't find, I don't really see why Shadim is Chaldeans. It's completely like 100 kilometers dist from distance. I mean, the difference. But Shadim is Yasod. It is telling us that Abraham emerged from Yasod of the Shadim in order to go into Egypt to the land of Canaan which Jehovah Elohim Bina is telling because Jehovah Elohim Bina is telling Hesed, go out from your family down to a land that I will show you and it's written there so Abraham left the city of Or of the Shadim it means very clear that that is spirit that floats above the waters those waters are the waters of Yesod. Is the spirit, the monad, that is entering into the path of self-realization. Because if that monad, if that spirit doesn't enter into the path of realization, there is no development. But Abraham, the prophet, represented that. And this is precisely why we have to understand the big difference between that great master that came to teach that <coughs> and our inner particular individual Abraham. Otherwise we get confused. As the Brahmins, as we told you there in India, the people think that the Brahmins in India, they are the true Brahmins, the children of Brahma. And it's completely different. One thing is something internal, and another thing is something physical. So therefore, the children of Abraham, because Abraham begot Isaac, or Isaac. And that Isaac relates to the Shoshana, to the spiritual soul. That is related with Geburah. And Isaac begot Tifereth, which is Jacob. So when we address the monad, we said Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or Brahma, uh, the spiritual soul, and the human soul. Adman Budimanas, as we say in Sanskrit, which represents this triangle below, which is in the very middle of the tree of life. Chesed is Brahma, or Abraham, Geburah is Isaac, Isaac, and Jacob is Tifereth. The three of them, as you see, the three main patriarchs that bring about the children of Israel in the physical world to their realization. Those archetypes called children of Israel have to be realized, developed in each one of us if we follow the path. 
And that's why the Zohar explains clearly that when, a, when Abraham descends into Egypt, which is Malkut, the matter, enter into the minor mysteries. And as a simple initiate, a beginner, Abraham begat Ishmael. But that Ishmael was the daughter of Agar, a slave of Malkut. A child. Yeah, but Agar, Agar was a daughter, as a female. That uh, Abraham was a slave of him, and he went into that slave in order to begat Ishmael. Now, according to the Bible, of course, if you find that literally, you said, oh, Ishmael, of course. Those people that are not Jews, right? But Ishmael represents all of us, which are not Jews. And when I name in the end name Jew, here we have to make another big parenthesis in order to understand that we are not related the lecture to the blood or to the will of the man, but to the will of God. So we have to go into the will of God in order to understand what is to be a Jew. And Jew is written with Yod, Hey, Vav. The three letters, Yod, Hey, Vav. Jew, this is how you, you write it, which represents Keter, Chokmah, Bina. But according to the Bible also, a Jew is someone that belongs to the, tri the tribe of Judah, right? And in order to write Judah, you write also yod Hey vav Hey, and before the last Hey, you put the letter Dalet, which symbolizes that. And when you put that Dalet before the last Hey, you said Yuda. In other words, he's pointing at somebody that knows the mystery of that in his own monad, which is Yod Hei Vav Hei. That is Judah. Now the Bible states that Judah is a lion. And according to the symbols, we understand that Judah symbolizes the constellation of Leo within which we find the great masters, Christified masters, that we named in the previous lecture, or great avatars, prophets. So that is the tribe of Judah. So somebody that is of the tribe of Judah is somebody that belongs to the constellation of Leo. When you read the Bible, you find that Leo, the lion, <coughs> relates to Judah. And the sun, S-U-N, which is that star that rules the constellation of Leo, is precisely in the very center of the tree of life. Any Kabbalists know that the sun relates to Tifereth. And that's why all the lines connect to Tifereth. In other words, the sun, because the sun gives life to all the sephiroth in the tree of life. But there is another sun, which is beyond Tifereth, which is the Ein Sof Or, which is beyond Keter, that is called the Solar Absolute, which is in the seventh dimension. That is also Leo, Judah. This is how you understand that Judah is written with yod He vav He the four letters of the sacred name, plus the letter Dalet, means those Logoi that are connected to the holy name. A Elohim and Elohim. So that is Judah. And that's why you find in the Bible that always Judah is a main character in the development of this doctrine. And in the book of Revelation, we find that says, 
those that call the same Jews and are not because they are a synagogue of Satan or they are liars, it says. They are naming, of course, those initiates or those people that interpret literally the scriptures and call themselves Jews. To call yourself a Jew is really a great level, a great thing. I mean, somebody that is developing inside Christ, the solar light, Leo. And that's why anyone that in Tifereth is developing that light, which is also the sun, is called a lion cub. A lion cub in Zen Buddhism is a bodhisattva that understands the truth or that can see the light because it's connected to the big lion, which is the solar absolute. Master Samael on the earth is a lion cub. And the lion is Samael Sabaoth. But every single Tifereth that is connected to the light of the absolute is a lion cub. Somebody that understands the wisdom of Kabbalah and alchemy. So therefore we see there that that sun is precisely placed in Yesod. Astrologically, it's also placed in Yesod. Because of all of that light descends into the sexual organs. So therefore, to call yourself a child of God means to enlighten all of the Shoshana, all of the Rose, all of the archetypes of Israel within you. There are many students of Kabbalah in this day and age that call themselves children of God just to the lineage, to the blood, or to the will of the man, because somebody is saying that. But we are talking here about the will of God. That's some, something that happens within you, which is your Ruach Elohim, Abraham. Abraham descends into the earth, into Egypt, Malkut, and they start developing himself there. And all the work of Abraham starts really when Jehovah Elohim comes to him and says, now your name should no longer be Abraham. Because you finish the minor mysteries. You are entering into the major mysteries. Now you have to work with the earth, with the hay. So you have to add the letter hay to your name. No longer Abraham, but Abraham. Meaning that God will work through you, creating through you, in ma, mem, hey, ma, which means, as we told you in other lectures, what? Right? And to Sarai, his wife says, now your name won't be Sarai anymore, it will be Sarah. We have to add the Hey, too, to your name. That means to enter into the major mysteries in order to create the children of God. That's why Sarah created in her womb Isaac, which means that lotus flower bloomed inside of the spirit. But any initiate that starts doing it here had children, of course. Samael on the earth had children in the physical world. And many great initiates had physical children. But there are many groups that because they are blood of that physical body, they think that they are children of God, children of Samael. And we explained on the lecture that that doesn't mean that. To become a child of God means is to work with the Son of God, which is Christ, within you that is related with all of these steps that we explained in previous lectures. So this is how you find that the Book of Sohar says that in the beginning of this creation, you find those children of the dawn, the Cosmo creators, that are called also the children of Israel. 
because they are fully developed. But also you find all of those monads that are beginners and whose archetypes are still not developed. Therefore, they are also called children of, 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 of God. But I'm pointing at the monad that have that capacity or the opportunity to become a star of the dawn, a cosmo creators, if that monad works its archetypes. And that is the main point here. Because when Jesus of Nazareth, the master of Eramento, came more than 2,000 years ago to explain all of this, which is very complicated, he said, the only way to explain this is with my own life, with my own example, and with every single step that I'm going to do in this physical world, I'm going to point at that. And that's why the book of John starts talking about this son of the light, this Christ, that have the power to make you a children of God, that we read there. But if you know how to read, you think, as many Christians in this day and age, that because they believe in what is written in the book of John, they automatically become children of God. But let me continue in this explanation in order for us not to fall into that mistake. Now, I'm going to read for you this precisely uh, debate that the Master Jesus had with those initiates at that time. When we're talking those initiates that knew about the scriptures, but they thought that they were children of God because they were following the lineage. And they were mistaken, the internal worlds, with the physical world, as in this day and age, still they're doing it. It is written in the book of John, chapter 8, from the chapter 32 to the 58. This is what is written. Jesus therefore said to those Jews which had faith on him, If you abide in my word, then are you truly my disciples. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You understand that statement? If you abide in my word, it's not in what I'm saying here. The word is precisely in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This is the beginning with God. Is the entity of Christ that is talking through him, not of what he is saying, but the entity of the word. They, those initiates that knew about the scriptures, said unto him, We are Abraham's sperma. This is how it is really, literally, in Greek. We are Abraham's sperma. And have never yet been in bondage to any man. What do you mean by you shall be made free? You see? Being a Jew by the will of the flesh or by the blood is being from the sperma of Abraham. Yeah, the prophet Abraham also had physical lineage, and this is what we find now in the Middle East. Not only the Jews, but also the Arabs that claim that Abraham is also their descendant, physically speaking, because Ishmael also, that existed physically, are the other part of Abraham. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I said unto you, Everyone that commits sin is bond servant of sin. And the bond servant abides not in the house forever. The son abides forever. But he's not talking about himself. He's talking about the son that we are talking about here is Christ. And you that are born by fornication, by the will of 
the man, we are not children of Abraham. If therefore the son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's sperma. Yet you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak the things which I have seen with my father, and you also do things which you heard from your father. They answered and said unto him, Our father is Abraham. And they were not lying there. They were really physically children of Abraham, but not internally, as we were explaining here. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, you will do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I heard from God. This is not Abraham. He is talking about, of course, the prophet. And he represents there the Son of God, which is Christ. You do the work of your father, he says to them. They said unto him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. I mean, they know about this doctrine that we are talking about here about the doctrine of chastity and they think that because they know that they are children of God the point here is that he said also multiplies through the animal kingdom because he's a monad and Abram began began being Abram the monad that still doesn't know how to transmute the sexual energy and multiply the, the animals. But it is a following, like any religious, faithful follower. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you will love me, for I came forth and I am come from God. For neither have I come of myself, but he sent me. What do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father the devil. And the last of your father, it is your will to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and stood not in the truth because there is not truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I say the truth, you believe me not. Which of you, which of you convicted me of sin? If I say truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. For this cause you hear me not, because you are not of God. It is very clear there. The devil, in the other case, is a power of Shaddai. Shadi, as you said in Hebrew. Shadi, the devil. The Shadim. And all of us came from it. But through fornication, to the will of the flesh. And just because we study Kabbalah and we study Gnosticism or any other religion, but if we don't follow the rules of chastity, of alchemy, if our own spirit doesn't work in the letter H, if Abraham doesn't descend to Egypt to create Isaac, we are not children of God, but of the devil. And this is what any alchemist, any master, sees very clear when he addresses the multitudes. The youth answered and said unto him, Say we not well that you are a Samaritan and has a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. But I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeks and judges. Verily, verily, I said unto you, if a man keep my word, he shall never see death. Again, he's not talking about his saying. To keep the word of God is to incarnate the word. 
the Christ within. If you keep it, and then you overcome death. But they don't understand. Because they are so attached to traditions and understand and think that everything is physical, but not internal. The Jews said unto him, Now we know that you have devil. Abraham is dead. And the prophets and you say, If a man keep my word, she shall, she shall never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom do you make yourself out to be? You see, he's teaching them, those Kabbalists, internally, but they go always out from the internal worlds and go to the physical matter. He says, we are children of Abraham, and Abraham is dead, and, and then you said that you saw him. But they don't understand that he is the Christ talking, which is eternal, immortal, everlasting. Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, you see, this physical personality, my glory is nothing. It is my Father that glorifies me inside, of whom you say, that is your God. And you have not known him, but I know him, and if I should say, I know him not, I shall be like unto you, a liar. But I know him, and keep his word. You see? Keep his word means the Christ within me. I keep it to the initiation. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. The Jews therefore said unto him, You are not 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? You see there the controversy? Again, they go to the physical plane. Of course. If I said I, that, that I saw Abraham and, and this day that I'm experiencing here, you would say, well, this guy is... Abraham existed a thousand years ago. How he come he, see, he saw Abraham, the prophet? No, I'm talking about my own particular Abraham. And he's talking about that too. But it is the controversy there where you don't understand the doctrine. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I said unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. You see, that's internal statement. Before he said was, I am is Keter. Because he said, the Ruach Elohim is a child of Keter. Before Abraham was, I am. But he is addressing his own being, his own Keter. But the Jew doesn't see that. He's saying physical. What do you mean that before Abraham, he was, you are, and you are not even 50 years old? They took up stones, therefore, to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. That's the end. You see here, in this day and age, you said, oh, that happened 2,000 years ago to these uh, in this day and age, people are different. No, it's the same. Same thing. We're talking about to be, how to become children of God, but they, all they already be, believe that they are children of God. You have to be born again. Oh, I, I, was, I, 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 I am a twice born already. Why? Because I read the Bible and I accept the word that is written there. Do you understand that it's not accepting the word that is written in the Bible, but, but the word that was in the beginning, that is Christ? Are we talking about in English here or what? But this is uh, always this complication. Everybody is a child of the devil. Because the devil is the ego that we have within. That lacked the spasm, the orgasm. Whether we are Jews, whether we are Muslims, Christians, Gnostics. We like that because we have the ego. So we have to annihilate the ego. To annihilate the ego and to become Children of God. You cannot be a child of God with the ego alive, with the devil, with the liar within. And this is how it is important to know that because we are in this moment at the level of Christmas when we find the black virgin that 
every initiate that knows alchemy, worship. The Divine Mother Kundalini, before becoming fertilized, is the black virgin who is in the basement of all Gothic monasteries. She is worshipped with green candles, with the hope that one day the green lion, the fire, will awake. We wrote between parentheses, will arise. However, when she, Malkut, our own physicality, is fertilized by Bina, the third Logos, the Holy Spirit, she becomes Miriam. Miriam means arising, to arise. This is what the word Miriam, that is translated into English as Mary, means. So when you arise, your sexual energy in your medulla, there is Miriam in your own matter. That is having the Son of God within your spiritual womb, which is your spinal medulla. The Divine Mother, the Divine Conception with a child in her arms. This child, which is Chokma, who descends, makes himself a son of the Divine Mother of oneself. He waits for the moment of entering into the body. Our own body, which is the stable of animals. Our own devil, egos that we have. In order to begin the process of the great work. The savior of each one of us, the interior Jesus Christ, is who matters. He is our intimate Yeshua. Again here, the word Yeshua has the letter Shin between yod he vav he Is the fire that is awakened. Each one of us must find our own savior. Because this is what Jesus thought when he came. That's why he was the child of Mary. His, he, I mean, his mother named what? Miriam in Hebrew. Or Mary in English. By coincidence? No. Because Miriam means to arise. It means that we have to arise first. In order for that child, which is Christ, to be born in each one of us. That's why today is the 21st of December. The, the cold solstice of winter. It begins now. means that today is going to be the longest night. Because the Lord is going to enter into the south. Into, into hell, in other words. And that's the beginning of the work. Is entering into the black Mary, you see, or Miriam. That's our own matter. This is symbolized in this movement of the sun. But 22nd, 23rd, 24th, three days after, the child will be born, which is the 25th of December, three days, right? Somebody was asking me, what are those three days? Three steps. The first step is to rise the kundalini because the sun will rise the 25th and then we will see how the days become longer than the nights and the Virgin Mary will be with child but that is related with the planet it had to be repeated in us as well that Virgin Mary is Malkut that we had to work with Malkut, within which Abraham has to descend. If Abraham, Abraham doesn't descend, if the monad doesn't work there, then that child of God is not going to be born in us. That's why it is written that Christ has the power to make us children of God. But that, he did that with Abraham, he did that with Isaac, with, the, with all the great prophets of the past, he did that. But every single prophet came in order to represent different elements that we have within. This is what we have to understand. Now let us see what this great Kabbalist, Paul of Tarsus, whose name was, well, in the beginning, was, his name was Hell, and came uh, into a little being. This is the meaning of Saul, who was... Hell was killing the Christians in the beginning, but then becomes repented. Saul and changed the names of Paul. He wrote this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44 to the 49, which is very clear 
when we know alchemy and Kabbalah. An animal body is sown. We were sown in the womb of our physical mother, and we have this body. Whether we are Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, Christian, Taoist, the physical body that we have, the physicality that we have, was sown in the physical world. And he states, a spiritual body is raised. It's very clear what Paul, this great Kabbalist, states. The spiritual body that everybody wants to have within is raised. How are you raised? If it's not by raising the fire of Kundalini, the 33 vertebrae in your spinal column. This is how it's raised and how the bodies are, are created within your womb, spiritual womb, the, the spinal medulla. If there is an animal body, that the one that we have, there is also a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. But there's another level that Paul of Tarsus is explaining here. When you reach the spiritual birth, then you become the first Adam, a living soul. But this is only a terrestrial Adam as well. And the last Adam is quickening the spirit, something that you developed inside after becoming the lower level in initiation. And he goes again. How be, how be it? That was not first which is spiritual, but that which is animal. And after what? That which is spiritual. With us, we came into the world physically. So this is first. And then we start knowing alchemy in order to build the spiritual body. But also, first emerges the animal man, which is called Nefesh Haya in the Bible. And now to, with the long processes, develop the spiritual. You see those different steps in the same teaching. But how is the people that read the Bible going to understand that when they do not understand alchemy? The first Adam is of the earth, of Malkut. The second Adam is the Lord of the heavens. It's heavenly. Now, who is this first Adam that emerges through alchemy? Is represented by the lower Sephiroth, the quaternary. Netzach, Hod, Yasod, and Malkut in the tree of life. But the heavenly Adam is from Tifereth above. As is the earthly, such are the also those that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Who do you think are the children of God? The heavenly ones, not the earthly ones. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Well, if we ask you, are you bearing the image of the earthly man? We cannot deny it. All of us bear that image, which is called the chromosomes or the DNA. That uh, inheritance that we have in our cells. That in the previous lecture we said, you look like your father or like your mother, physically speaking. So you have that in your blood. But to have that in your blood doesn't mean that you are a child of God. Because in order to bear the image of the heavenly, you have to bring that image down to the earth, 
through alchemy to bring that image of the heavenly man down is to bring Hesed, Abraham, from that level of the spirit down to you in the moment when you are performing the sexual act and to sublimate, to rise the energy. And then this is how your astral, mental, causal, solar bodies are being born within you and you are appearing in the internal worlds as a heavenly man. But terrestrial men, there are different levels here. But uh, it is absurd that the earthly man call himself a child of God. It is not. One thing is a child of God, and the other thing is the earthly man. What you see here, for instance, in this lecture, when you are looking at me, you are looking at the image of the earthly man. Only if you are in issues clairvoyance and have developed clairvoyance, then you can see the image of my inner heavenly man, which is different. And if I said this is because I have that image in me as well. And that's why I say this with authority. It's not that I read it. I have both images in me. Now I am not perfect. Because Christ, after rising the 25th of December, has to pass three days, three steps. The second step, the third step, are related to those that already are born with the heavenly bodies. And they can fall into sin. And we will follow the sequence of this lecture. Let us now see the follow of the next image. The Bible says, And Elohim said, Let us make Adam in our image after our likeness, and let them be have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And Elohim created, you see, first you find the word make, which is asya, the physical world. And then you find here the, the word bria. It is very clear. And Elohim created Adam in his own image. And in the image of Elohim created he, him. Bria. Male and female created he, them. And again, the word bria, bra, Brahma, Abraham is there. Through the Ruach Elohim, he did it. But he began first when Elohim said, let us make. That's the world of Asia. It means that in order to make that man, you have to begin here with your physicality. You need somebody that will tell you, if you are a man, that person will tell you, let us make now Adam. Because there are two there. Unless you will say, oh, God is talking to himself. There are two parts. The first part says, let us make Adam in our, in our image. It's plural there. According to our likeness. You see? So it's a divinity talking to the lower, from the lower part to the upper part. Inside of the initiate. The divine mother, in other words, which is Ma, talking to me, which is the Holy Spirit. Why we said that me is the Holy Spirit? Because Elohim hides that. Elle means these. And Ella means goddess, the same letters. But the letter I am, which backwards is me, symbolizes the male part. Me and Ma united. So Ma says, let us make Adam in our image. And he's saying that to me, to Elohim where these archetypes are hidden. Because without the archetypes, how are we going to, they're the meant to appear. Now later, what the Zohar explains, he says, let us make Adam in our image and after our likeness indicates that in Adam's yesod, sex, exist forces and powers coming in all directions from Elohim on high. 
which is that, which by chokmah, wisdom, will finally attain their culmination within him. All of that will be developed in us through chokmah, which is the sun. The words, let us make Adam include and contains as in water the mystery of El and Ela, God and Goddess principles, of which every act, which is Asia in the physical world, and function is affected by supreme wisdom. So you need to have alchemy. I don't need to do that. In our image and of our likeness denote the dignity of Adam, as he alone amongst the created souls is an efesh haya, complete unit in himself, and is thus able to rule over all souls below him. So an efesh haya is a soul that controls all the souls below him. Why? Nefesh is soul in the physical world. Haya, we talk about that in many other lectures, is the soul that relates to the Holy Spirit. That's why when we talk about Haya, life, we talk about the Holy Spirit. It's a saying that we said, to life, lahayam, to the Holy Spirit, to the forces of the tree of life. And that life is the Holy Spirit. That when the man into the image of God is created, receives the name of Nefesh Haya. An eagle is a complete being, a Nefesh Haya. A lion is a complete being, a Nefesh Haya. A bull is a Nefesh Haya in itself. But we, in this very moment, we cannot call ourselves nefesh haya. Do we have power of the souls below us? Can we control a lion like Daniel the prophet did in dungeon? He was put in a den of lions. But he was a nefesh haya. He controlled the lions. If we, or if people put any one of us in a dungeon with one lion, not many. Are we capable of controlling that lion? Put your hand on your heart and answer to yourself. We are not Nefesh Haya. We don't have power of this inferior animal called lion or maybe a tiger. What about a wolf? This is another not powerful like a, like a lion. So let us Understand that if we call ourselves, oh, we are children of God, right? Because it's written there and we are interpreted that in that way. I say, okay, you are children of God, show me. Control nature. Control hurricanes, earthquakes. We are weak. Weak animals. Now... Let us go into Genesis in order to explain that. With all the explanation, you understand the following verse of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 1. It came to pass when Adam began to master upon the face of Adama, means when you become to master your own physicality. And daughters were born unto them that the children of Elohim who were represented in the Sephirah he said, these are the Ruach Elohim of the spirits of God. So the daughters of Adam that they were good. The word for good is Tevet. That means Physically fertile for transmutation. And they took them wise for sexual alchemy of all which they choose. How do you interpret that? Because many talks about that. 
And they say, oh, the children of God that were coming in the spaceships and saw the beautiful women of the earth. But if you interpret Kabbalah and alchemy, you understand very well that those children of God are complete, self-realized initiates that were there. The first root race, the polar race, the second root race, the Hyperborean race, and the third root race, the Lemurians, they were children of God. And their mission were, of course, to be there in order to grant their bodies, their physicalities, human physicalities, to the monads that were coming from evolution from the animal kingdom. How do you think the monads that were animals that were ready to enter into the humanoid kingdom have physicalities, physical human bodies? How do they get it? Simple. When these children of God saw that in the physical world, the monads were ready to enter into the human or kingdom, they abandon their physicalities and grant, granted their physicalities to the new souls that were coming from the animal kingdom. So this is how they enter into the human bodies. But these animal souls coming from the animal kingdom into human bodies that were given as a gift from these true human beings have to learn how to transmute, have to do the work that we are pointing here because they have the opportunity to become children of God as well. But then when they started doing the sexual magic, some of them, since they were animals, fornicated. This is one of the explanations that we find how the Lemurian root race fell. Among those that fell, which were animals, or humanoids if you want, but in human bodies that were granted, receiving as a gift from humans. Some of them learned how to draw neutral, but the great majority fell. And among them, there were other Lemurians, children of God, that still have that, and they didn't give their bodies. When they saw that these animal or humanoids were doing that, they saw the opportunity to have those women, physicalities too. And this is how you explain how they fell also. Call for an angels. So there are two types in Lemuria. Those children of God that also fornicated and fell into animal generation. And those that receive the body as an inheritance, as a gift. But they were still animals. And they were multiplying like animals. Those are the ones that receive the Kundabafi organ. In order to learn all of these mysteries that we are teaching here to develop knowledge of good and evil. So with a mixture there, that you have to understand when you understand and to meditate and go into those times of Lemuria. You find the human shape, but also you find the monads inside of them, which are also humans, because all the monads always have the human shape. I experienced many times in different levels that are always in contact with the monarch of a plant, of a mineral, of an animal, they always have the human shape. But in the physical plane, we see a plant, we see a mineral, a rock, or an animal. But in the time of Lemuria, those animals that were very evolved received these beautiful human bodies. That's why we have the inheritance of those Lemurian bodies in us, because we are the outcome of that. That's why the Master says we have in the sexual glands those elements that were granted unto us by those humans that left the bodies by will in order to help in the evolution of this planet. 
But everybody chose fornication and still they don't take advantage of those human values that we have in the sexual lands. This humanity is a big fornicator humanity. They are children of the devil. They don't have the children of God within, but they have the opportunity, of course, if they follow this knowledge. That's why yod said, my ruach, my spirit, which is has said, shall not always strive with the terrestrial Adam, for that he also is flesh. Yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. That was the age that finally went down because of fornication. Because it's talking about here the terrestrial Adam, the flesh, not the spiritual. This is how you have to understand that. To make a difference between the terrestrial man and the heavenly man. The Bible continues. There were giants, intellectual animals, humanoids in the earth in those Lemurian days. And also after that, when the children of Elohim, Chesed, or Ruach Elohim, came into Malkut, the daughters of Adam, and they, their physicalities, Malkut, bear solar children, solar bodies, to them, the monads. The same, through sexual transmutation, became Giborim, mighty men of Geburah, which became eternal Enosh, human beings with a sacred name. So in other words, many monas saw the opportunity that they were receiving at that time, and they worked and built that giborim, geburah, or as the Bible said, Isaac. Right? Because Isaac is placed in geburah. And this is how you receive your internal name, the name of your inner monad. Not the name of your physicality. Because in this physical world, you have name according to the lineage that you are born, your family. But that is just a circumstance, something that passes. The eternal name is eternal. It's always there. That's why we said human name with a sacred name. What the Bible says, with name. And then... This is also related with that chapter in the Bible that says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For Elohim said, Had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, who Cain killed. And to Seth, to him also where was, uh, there was born a son. And he called himself, or the name of that, Enoch. Again, the same name, you see. Thus, this is how they began to bear in themselves the name of yod -Hava. This is how the Bible says. This is how they become human beings. When Adam knew his wife again. And previously I told you that Adam knew his wife as an animal. And he lost. But when he learned, as we are learning here, he met his wife again, his physicality. And through sexual alchemy, he built Seth, which is the third. Inside of us, in the back, is Seth, which is fire. And when that fire rises, Miriam in Hebrew, then Enoch, the human being, is born inside. This is what Genesis 4, 25 and 26 uh, explains too. But, of course, you know that the animal lust is stronger than the chastity. And before the universal flood, there was a big degeneration. And people, that humanity called the Atlantean humanity, that was uh, the outcome of that mixture, were great fornicators. It is written, and Elohim saw that the weakness of Adam was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. 
And it repented Jehovah that he had made Adam on the earth. On the earth, not above. The heavenly Adam, the heavenly man, good. But on the earth, the terrestrial is a great fornicator. And it grieved him in his heart. And Yodhava said, I will destroy Adam, whom I have created from the face of the earth. The face of the earth is Malkut. Both Adam and beast, and the creeping thing that the, and the folds of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. You see, God is repented there of the, all of this. Now when he sees uh, what is in the surface of the earth, he repents. He says, why is this? And I created it, he said, because everything that is here is the outcome of the sexual energy. Elohim binah. Yahovah Elohim. That is the sexual energy. And we are utilizing it in the wrong way. So God says we have to destroy this because they are utilizing me in the wrong way. But if we follow the right path, let us go into the next graphic. John 1st, 9 to 14. You see the solar man by William Blake. He says, that was Christ, the true light, which enlightens every man that comes from Tifereth into the world of Malkut. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his son received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, even to them that have faith on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is what we experience when we follow the path in us through initiation to become children of God. That word, as we were explaining in the beginning, has to become flesh. It's not that we are going to memorize and put into that flesh that is called brain all the Bible and to memorize it with uh, chapters and verses. And as all, oh, I see my flesh, that word. No, that, it doesn't mean that. To incarnate the word is to incarnate Christ, which is fire. That's why in the last graphic, we quoted Proverbs 1 from 7 to 9. The fear of Yodhava is in the beginning. Of knowledge, which is that, Gnosis. However, Wisdom and ethics are despised by fools. Those that think that they are going to be in heaven or to become heavenly men or children of God just because they believe in the Bible or just because they study Kabbalah and they don't practice what they teach, they are fools. That's why the battle said, My child, hear the ethics of thy father and forsake not the laws of thy mother. Now listen, laws is plural. And if you read uh, that word in English, we said taro or tarot because the letter tava at the end is feminine plural. So the laws of thy mother, the tarot, which you find in the Psalm 119. All the 22 letters, explanation of each one of the commandments given by God to us. For they shall be a garland of grace on thy head and a necklace about thy neck. But why we place the Lord there, crucified on the cross? Because on, in order to follow that ethics, in order to follow those laws of the mother, the vertical beam is the father and the horizontal is the mother which in the physical world is the phallus and the vagina united in chastity. 
And there is where the Lord Christ, which is represented by a human being, is crucified. Every time that we perform the sexual magic, the fire is crucified. It's crossing, crossing, crossing. The sexual fire of the female is crossing the sexual fires of the male. That is the cross. Simple. And the Lord is fire. So he is always in that cross. Hanged. And suffering because of lust. This is how we destroy the lust. This is how the Lord transformed the sins of the world through the cross. It's not a torture instrument that were used in the time of the Romans. That even Jesus was crucified there in order to teach that. But we have to understand that that terrible death that he had has a symbol. And that's why I was written above it. Ingri, ignis natura renovatur integra. The fire renews nature constantly through alchemy. Do you have questions? So, back in the slide where you were uh, talking about the Lemurians and you quoted Genesis chapter 6, um, where it's, it's uh, where Yohavah said that. Man's days shall number 120 years. You said that is the age that finally went down as a result of fornication. Um, do you mean that's a it's a physical age that we're capped at, or did you mean something else? There? Physical age. It's a physical age. Physical age, because in the time of Lemuria, among the children of God, those that were already self-realized at that time, mm -hmm. their physicality were enduring as much, 15 centuries. That, was, that is the average age for the children of God in the physical world, 15 centuries. But when those monads of animals inherited that, uh, those bodies of humans and start fornicating, of course, they were losing the energy, the, the substance. So the age was diminishing, 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 diminishing until now is even less than 120, right? It's like 50 or 60 or maybe less. That's why uh, when somebody appears there that is uh, 300 years old or 400 years old, oh my goodness. Well, the normal span of life is 15 centuries for a human being, which is a children of God. So if you call yourself a child of God, a children of God, and you died before 100, uh, shame on you. You had to gain an immortal body. That's why you need resurrection, which is the last step. When you reach resurrection, you gain the body that you lost when you were fallen or when you fall. Fell. Yeah? Are there, are there uh, three steps or are there six steps? So there, was, there would be the three down, right? Uh, which we were talking about before the creation of the solar bodies, the marriage of the spirit to the soul, and the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Are those the same or are there three additional steps? No, it's the same. Those three days are represented in many symbols. Here, because we are now entering into the winter uh, solstice, it's also represented because today begins 21st. But the 25th is going to rise, right? The, the child God. So that's the three, three steps in between that are represented by alchemically three steps that we have to follow. The first one is when our black virgin that is not fertilized by the fire yet become fertilized and then is no longer a black virgin but is Miriam or Mary. And then the child start growing up. Right? And later, later in time if we follow the steps we will enter into the second day. That second day really is very difficult. And the third as well. But it is represented, I said, in many steps. We explained that in many lectures. Do you have another question? Uh, you have a lot of pictures from William Blake. Was he a um, Bodhisattva? Well, uh, is William Blake a Bodhisattva or was a Bodhisattva? I really don't know. But uh, he was a great initiate, obviously. Because all the symbols of, of his pictures, of his paintings are 
hiding a lot of truth that if you have vision, you can see. Now he resurrected, I don't know. But obviously he knew. Right? Like uh, John Milton as, as well from England that wrote uh, Paradise Lost. Also a great, uh, great mission. Let's see if there is a question here in the back. If we are not to orgasm, how are children to be born on earth? Like animals. <laughs> you see, the children are born in the earth. If we don't orgasm, how the children are going to be? Like human beings. Yes. Like human beings is the, is the answer. How can they be born if they do not fornicate? How can they make children if they do not fornicate? The, the, the question is, how can we multiply in the physical world and we don't orgasm. Exactly. If we don't do it. As animals, it's impossible. But if we reach the level of human being, we can multiply as human beings. We have to learn that. Remember that. Don't depart from the point of view that we are already human beings because we are not. Physically, we have the inheritance of a body that in the Lemurian times were very good but diminish, devolve, devolve, devolve until the level in which we are right now. But we are still animals within. And we multiply as animals. If you observe any horse, any bull, any dog, any cat, they multiply like that. With orgasm. Because they are animals. And we multiply like that because we are animals. But if we enter into this path, little by little, we teach our physicality to become a human level, the human being, then we can multiply as human beings. Then we, by that, of course, the children that will we have will be in another level, physically. But the souls that we enter there, maybe bodhisattvas, maybe not, maybe still animals, and that they will take that body and fornicate like we did when in the time of Lemuria. They were inheriting the human bodies, and what these animals did, fornicated. Reached the orgasm. So in this day and age, of course, there are many initiates that have children through alchemy. Because it's easy for a sperm to escape from the sexual glands of a man and fecundate a woman, which we also in alchemy. But that will be by will of God. Not by your own will. And that sperm will be a child that in the physical world will be submitted to the same laws that we are. Because we inherited a very devolving animal body. And that's the sad thing. And so the children that we will have, whether through animal orgasm or through the alchemy level, you know, the human being, will be always in the same level of devolving level that we are. This is why we have to understand because there are many uh, Gnostics in the past that had children through alchemy, without orgasm. One sperm escaped and the woman became pregnant by the will of God. You hear, you see? But it doesn't mean that that is a child of God. Physically, he is a special body. But internally, if he follows the path, then he will become a child of God. This is what we have to understand. The difference, I said it, is the span of time. A physical body that is immortal, is a span of life is 1,500 years, at least. No, he's saying a child. But a child that is born from an alchemist, from alchemists, yeah. men and women, well, uh, will come with his karma, unfortunately. And whether that body is, of course, a nice body, because it's a child of chastity doesn't mean that it's special. The body might be special, but inside, if you have lust and your karma, you are carrying your karma in, on your back, obviously, you will have to pay that with the animal body or with that nice body that you are receiving. So what makes it nice? <laughs> What's the difference? Nice. nice. What's the difference? Well, that, 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 that at least, uh, that make it nice. Because uh, is a body that uh, will have another type of vibration. It's not animal. I mean, it's animal, but it's not the outcome of the animal spasm. It's the outcome of transmutation. Imagine, 
that your own particular Abraham will descend by the will of Jehovah Elohim and take one sperm of your sexual glands and put it into the oven of your wife. That will be nice, right? That will be, we will say, an Ishmael. But that Ishmael was terrible if you read the Bible because he had ego, right? So it doesn't matter how we are born physically. If we don't work inside, we are children of the devil. So are you saying if you, if you create a child of alchemy that it doesn't necessarily attract a, a higher soul or someone who's working on this path? We'll attract, but in the level that we are, we'll be a fallen soul. You see, I knew, I don't want to say the name, of somebody that was born like that and was a fallen bodhisattva. And he was behaving like a fallen bodhisattva with his beautiful and nice body, drinking and fornicating everywhere. So what was the benefit of that? He was destroying, as the monas, animal monas in Lemuria, were destroying those human bodies, same way. Yeah, the only it means uh, it means Bra, Abra, the the father that creates Abra, the father of the high that creates Bria creation, going down into Ma, which is Malkut. So Abraham going into Ma, Malkut means Abraham going into Egypt and working there. Right? Of course. That that is through the minor initiations and major initiations. The Zohar explains that very clearly. Yeah? Uh, is there any connection between the Abra Kadabra, that mantra, and Abraham? Well, that mantra, really, Abra Kadabra, really it relates to the world of Bria. Opens, you see, the lungs, live with the lungs. Because the lungs are the breath of God, the spirit. Abra, Kadabra, is a mantra that is vulgarized in this day and age. You find that mantra everywhere, even in the soup that you drink. <laughs> but it's a sacred mantra, right? But it is Abraham descending into Ma, into the matter. You see? Me into Ma. Who? What? Is there another question here? No? Uh, another question? Yes? So, when you, uh, uh, just to clarify the language, you, you, you talked about how the Lemurians, uh, uh, the, the more developed souls, gave their bodies to those who were coming in from the animal kingdom. They didn't actually give their bodies, right? They, they produced children who, uh, who then took on the souls of these animals. Is that, yeah. That's it. The other thing I wanted to ask, um, you equated Shadim with Yesod. Mm. And you said Shadim means uh, phantoms and... Uh... We're creatures. If you look in a dictionary, in Hebrew dictionary, about Shadim or Shaddai, yes. it's related with it's a devil, demon, and but it relates to the sexual power, the sexual energy. Okay. And that's why the holy name of God in Yesod is Shaddai el Chai. Which means that says very clear, but uh, in the animal level, Shaddai el Chai acts like an animal, a demon, right? And that's why it is very controversial because when you enter into the path, you have to enter through Shaddai, Shadim. That's why it said Abraham became into Canaan through Shadim, from, or from Shadim, which is the city of Or, the sexual force. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, into the land of Canaan, which is that land of Canaan? It's a spinal column. From Yesod into the spinal column, Canaan. This is how you have to understand. What we learned that the first miracle that Jesus made 
was the transmutation of the water into wine in the weddings of Canaan. And it's because it's the spinal medulla, the Canaan, where Abraham rises from Egypt. Right? Because Abraham descends of Egypt. But uh, Jehovah Elohim said to Abraham, no, 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 no. Egypt is not that land that I'm talking about. It's Canaan. All right. But when you read Canaan, it's always in the Middle East. No, 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 no. It's that Canaan is the spinal medulla when he rises from the minor mysteries and the major mysteries. This is the only way to understand how you become children of God. And it's to Canaan to enter into the promised land that you become that. Otherwise, you enter into confusion, and like in this day and age. Still, there are groups there that are fighting for that promised land in the middle, in the middle, middle land, how do you call it? Middle East, right? There are people, of course, that take everything literally. If you know Kabbalah and alchemy, you will forget about that and start working yourself. Because that Canaan, Spina Medulla, has to, is where Abraham has to raise and to become a child of God. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,